Today I want to show you how easy it is to import a video into DaVinci Resolve 17 for color correction, even if it was edited in Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere, uh, with just a single baked exported video file. Let's get into it. So this video is all about the brand new Detect Scene Cut feature that's under the Timeline menu in the all new DaVinci Resolve 17. And I also want to show you the scene cut detection, which is a different thing in Media Pool. To use detect scene cuts, we need to make sure we're in DaVinci Resolve 17 at least. This is beta 6 that's out right now. Uh, you're just going to grab a full resolution edited video. If you can make it ProRes, that's going to work easier on your system. Drag that into your Media Pool. Go to your cut page and let's drop it on a timeline. We'll call this detect scene cuts. Okay, we can drag that in our folder and then drag our footage down here to the timeline. And you can see here on our edit page, we have a single long, two and a half minute long video, um, but there's clearly lots of cuts. In the color page real quick, this is one single clip. So this is the point of this whole thing is we wanna be able to color correct the video shot by shot. And to do that, we need to chop it up. So the Way you would do that if you were not uh, able to automate it, which you can do now, is you could just step through it, which you've probably done before. You step through the clip and you can use command backslash, we'll create a cut, and then you can see, oh, now we have two shots, but we actually need 50 for this. So this would be a real tedious way of going through an entire video. So we don't wanna do that. I'm gonna do command Z to undo that. And we're gonna use the new feature selecting the footage under Timeline, Detect Scene Cuts. So we'll choose this and let it run. So DaVinci Resolve calls it the neural engine that's doing this. So it's, uh, it's a new way and it's a little simpler than scene cut detection, which I'm gonna show you later in this video. So it's, it's pretty amazing. It's going through this whole two minute video in probably half real time. And what it's looking for is difference in contrast, composition, and it's doing a pretty decent job. One thing I haven't tested, but it's probably likely, is if you were using log footage, it might not be able to do quite as good a job as something like this that already has a bit of contrast in it. Just something to note. All right, it seems to be done. If we go to the color page now, we can see now we have uh, 50 shots. So it has done a pretty great job of going through this entire video and finding cuts at the right point. So you can see the timeline, there's a shot, cuts to the next shot, and it has just dropped those, it has split those clips at the right moment. What if it does not do it correctly? Well, you can go back into here, which, and I know there's two shots in here that, that don't quite work. There's a cross dissolve on them. So we have a shot here where she's coming up out of the Jeep and it does a cross dissolve to her already out of the Jeep. So if we go to the midpoint between the two and do a command backslash there, now we have created an extra shot. We should see there are 51 shots. And in fact, I think there's one more of those in here that it didn't quite catch. So it's not foolproof, but it's pretty great. Like for me to go through and do that manually would have taken uh, you know, much longer time than the 30 or so seconds it took to do the two minutes with the computer doing it for me. So here's the other spot. So if we go left and then it goes to this cool shot from the outside. So if you just do a command backslash and that's right where that cross is all is. Now we have instead of 51 shots in our timeline, we have 52 shots to color correct and work on. One of the things I really love about detect scene cuts is it gives you a lot of flexibility after the fact, after you've run the neural engine process. So now I fake this here, but let's say it messed up and it put a cut between these two shots right here. And you can see it went from 21 to 22, right? Um, I, I fake that, but let's say it, it did that on accident and we need to clean that up so that we don't have all these extraneous shots. You can go back to the edit page, you can select the edit point and you can delete that. And so now we return back to the color page and it's a single shot. So that is, uh, that's pretty helpful. That's not something you're able to do with scene cut detection, which I'm gonna show you in just a minute. Now, another thing the detect scene cuts feature gives you is the ability to take a cut um, and roll it 
left and right. Um, this is something that if it was just off by a frame or two, you could easily do that. Um, and that's again, that's something you cannot do using scene cut detection. And that's because it's referring to a single clip back in the media pool. So if we looked here, it's the whole thing is still based off of one single clip, which in my mind makes sense because it is one single clip. So that's, uh, that's just something to note. That's one of the differences between detect scene cuts and scene cut detection is that you have a little bit more flexibility on the timeline after the fact. One more tip I have for detect scene cuts is rather than selecting the clip and going to timeline detect scene cuts, you can actually narrow in and just say, hey, I don't really need to pay attention to part of it or cut up part of it. Maybe it's an hour long program. You can mark an endpoint and an out point on something and then just say, hey, I just wanna do the scene cut detection, excuse me, the detect scene cuts. They couldn't have made that more confusing on just that region. So if you mark it in and out, it should obey just that section. So we've done that and we go to timeline, detect scene cuts, and you can see the playhead there has started right where my endpoint is. And rather than us having, you know, 50 or so shots, I'm expecting we have about a third of that. Okay, there we go. So it's pretty darn sweet. We look here, it was right when we started um, doing our endpoint and outpoint, selecting that range, it has marked our clips. So, and it's it's done a really great job of doing that again. Next up, we're gonna be looking at the scene cut detection window in DaVinci Resolve, which has been around for years and I've used it thousands of times. It works great. Um, but I just wanna let you know if you're new here, my name is Chadwick. This is Creative Video Tips. It's all about helping you create videos that make a difference and stand out. If that's the kind of thing you're into, click subscribe right now so you don't miss my tip next week. Now let's take a look at the alternate way of cutting up an edited video using scene cut detection. To use scene cut detection, you're gonna be in the media page and this is all gonna happen before you bring the video into the project. So you've got your single edited video, you're gonna right click on it, you're gonna say scene cut detection and this brings up a whole new interface with a different playhead. And what you're basically looking at here is the middle frame is the frame you're parked on, the one to the left is the frame before it, and the one frame to the, or the, the window here on the right is the frame after the what's on the playhead. So what we're gonna try to do is have this to, to double check our cuts before they're added into the project. What this means is the two here on the right are gonna look like the same shot, and the one on the left will be different if it does it correctly. Now to kick it off and get it started, you just go to the lower left, there's a button called Auto Scene Detect, click it, and it's running through. And the green bars, the height of them basically is telling you how confident it thinks that is actually a cut. And if it's lower, it thinks it's less likely that it's a cut. And then the magenta bar, after this is done running, you can raise or lower it. Um, and it will turn those little gray ones green and it'll actually count those as cuts. So I know right here, right away, like it's missed some cuts. So like there's a shot there and we're on another shot there. So, but if you drag this magenta bar down, now it's actually gonna think that that is a cut. And over on the right side, we have a list of all the cuts. So if we click down to the next one, we can see on the left side window here, there's one shot and then the right side with these two together, that's the same shot. So that's what we wanna be seeing on all of the cuts. Now, as we go through, it has definitely at least at this medium sort of confidence, it's definitely missed a lot more cuts than the new method that uses the neural engine. We can drag this down further here and we'll, we'll catch some more of them. But when we do that, just know we are also catching a lot of noise and sort of junk here in this section, which it's dealing with um, cross dissolves. It might be dealing with fades or something. What are we looking at here? Let's push play. Yeah, so it's. I think what's getting really confused with is the blinking lights in the background. So it's 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 a, basically it gets you a good start, but it's not going to be perfect. So you'll still want to go through and remove edits that are not happening at the right spot, or add them where it maybe has missed um, some. So like for instance, right here, 
another one of these cross dissolves it cannot find so if you just put the playhead where it's sort of the middle point of two different shots you know you can do that um, let's say we want to do it I don't know right there you can just click add and that adds a cut you can see that just added that right there so it basically added a new shot that we can then color correct differently on the timeline in the upper right three dot menu here you have the option to load an EDL so if your editor that's going to send you the video from something else can actually export an EDL which you can do really simply in Adobe Premiere you can load the EDL in here and it's going to use that in conjunction with your auto scene detect or in lieu of it and that'll give you really good results. You can also save the scene cut file, which is a .sc file, I believe. And what that means is if you have like a really long project, maybe it's an hour long show or something, you can save part of your work of all that pruning you've done as a separate file, have it and then send it to another person that's gonna actually do the color correction work. So it could be like an assistant doing it or something. So that's just a, a file that contains this cut information it's all about that file before it's brought into the project um, and then there's also some other tools up here for like pruning and pruning basically means hey you know we have all these marks but there's nothing actually going on that we need in that section so you would mark an in point or an out point and then you can click prune from up there or there's this little scissor and you click that and then all those extra green uh, ticks go away the other thing you can do in this scene cut detection window is add cuts. If you see a spot where I missed one and you would just park your playhead wherever you think that should be at and then click add. And then once I've done that, you can see it put a green bar there. So it's basically going to make a new clip, a virtual clip out of that section. Now, how do we get these into the project? You just go to the lower right here where it says add cuts to media pool. You click that once and then we have individual clips in the media pool for each of those things that it thought was an individual shot. Now what's interesting about this is these have hard limits for the top and tail, which once they're on a timeline, which is what we're gonna do next here, we'll just go over here and say, we'll select all these from the beginning to the end and we'll drop them down here, is when you get to the edit page and see all these cuts, this is one of the things that really differs between the other version is we don't have through edits anymore. So what that means, we can't select that and say delete, right? It's because it's a different source clip. So you can go in and trim it like you, you know, if you needed to do a cut down or something, but you can't remove that. So if your first step where you do the scene cut detection is wrong, it's kind of a pain in the butt, <laughs> to put it lightly. You have to do all your work in that separate window, and if you don't do it right, it's it's much more difficult to, to deal with having mistakes there. But you can't do a roll if it missed it by a frame, and you can't delete it. So definitely a disadvantage there to the old school way of doing it. But the fact that you can save a scene cut file or you can load an EDL, those are really still useful tools. So now you know all about importing a video that's already been cut and exported from another application. There is another way of working with footage to color correct it in DaVinci Resolve. It, it involves using the source camera footage and an instruction list called an XML or EDL. If you're interested in how that works, please leave a comment below. That'll let me know that that might be a video worth making and I can show you how to do that as well. It's a little bit more complicated, so that's why it's not the first video I made. Um, but it actually works really great, especially if you're using Final Cut Pro because the XML translates really good. I hope you got something out of this video. Again, if you got something out of it, please click like and ask any questions in the comments. DaVinci Resolve is continuing to evolve, so I'll be curious if they keep both of these scene cut detection methods around for a long time. This video may only be useful for a year or two. Um, but I hope it was useful to you today and I'll see you in the next video.